quite far from proving the actual trajectory. Anyway, so the setup. Right, the hollows. So we have x. And some of the results I'll talk on about are actually slightly more general, but let me actually stick just to the LBO case. So here is the dimension, the relative dimension. And so each xt is a Calabi-Yau, and more, I'm assuming, just to simplify a little bit, that this is, this is trivial, the relative canonical bundle. So then I just pick beta, this kind of local, this is a global non-vanishing section. Uh, this guy. So then uh, beta t, this is, well, they are restricted to xt, so this is a global section of axt. Um, so that's why it's uh, right. So then I define new t. So this is going to be my, get from this one more from that form, I get a positive volume form, which, uh, for instance, like that. And then I normalize this, so this is a volume form. So it's smooth, positive measure on xt. And then I normalize this. Uh, if I want, I can do that. So just to get a probability measure, so nu t divided by nu t of xt. So this is a probability measure. Um, okay. So some other goal is to study Goal one somehow, which is the only one I really essentially want to address, is to study this measure uh, mu t, or I mean the other one as well, and I guess as t goes to zero, and I'll make that precise. So these are measures of different spaces, so it's not clear exactly a priori what could happen in the limit. Um, but then the second goal is to relate would be to relate this to the actual conjecture. So for that I need a so it's a given, a given L, so let's suppose this is a relatively ample line bundle on, on X. So the restriction to each XT is ample. So then by Yao, I can pick omega T, so unique, Ritchie flat, a Taylor form in C1 of LT. Yao, this exists and is unique, and uh, then this is actually related to uh, if I, I mean, this mu t at least is equal to some. Uh, well, I mean, it's actually equal to omega t to the n, right? This is a one-one form, so I do this as an n n form. I interpret that as a measure; it's a positive measure, and at least if I normalize it like that, and in fact, I mean, this this guy is just equal to l to the n. It's that very weak. So this this is just L to the N. I mean, not L to the N, but T to the N. Um, right. So some other second goal would be to goal two. So something that you say that it's not fulfilled, but you can still have it as a goal. Um, so uh, so use use the information on this uh, UT to study this omega T is T to zero. So this would be the conservative sodium projection. I mean, I'll say something towards the end for how you could possibly at least dream of doing this, but uh, all right. Okay, so I need to focus on this. So I mentioned already last time. So what you, the way to, one way to study this is to study models. So I'm going to fix a simple normal crossings model. X. Right? So it's kind of you have X. This is over D. Inside here you have D star. And here is X. So I just extend it like that. And I assume this is a simple normal crossings model. So locally, um, 
the local looks like a bunch of coordinate planes meeting. And this has a dual complex delta x. Um, and then inside this dual complex, there's a skeleton. So this was some sk and x eta inside delta x. And it's, it's a bit misleading because it actually, I mean, this eta is almost, it's not quite unique. I mean, it's unique up to multiplication by a function on the base. Uh, that function on the base is actually not really going to, that choice is not going to affect this. So in, in some sense, it doesn't depend on eta. The choice it doesn't depend on it. But Data. But it, the problem is if I just write script x, it's not, it does, this, this doesn't just depend on script x as well. You somehow need the Calabi of information in here. So let me just stay with that. And then we had that by definition x was <coughs> maximally degenerate if and only if this uh, dimension of this guy. So this guy is actually, this, this thing is connected in this setting. Just not trivial, I'm not even. Uh, and the dimension of this skeleton, let me just write this, is equal to. N. Is this your definition or a fact? Well, definitions. Yeah. And is this equivalent to the definition of the monodromy? Yeah, so I'm not really going to talk about the monodromy, but I, it actually, what I'm going to say is rather. Um, I'm, I mentioned that last time, but um, the, the volume of this, I mean, the total mass of new T here. Going to grow like a power of t, uh, which is essentially relevant, and then it's going to be a power of log t. And that power is exactly that dimension, and then you relate that in a monogram as well. But I'm not going to do that. So yeah, for this purpose, right now, I define it to be this way. Um, so somehow, okay. So I'm not the proof of what I'm going to say later. It's mostly computation, which is a little bit messy, but in principle, elementary. Uh, let's, uh, the so let me just write kind of what the local picture is here, um, just to say something, right? So, so I'm going to look at, this is, so I'm going to look at some point on, this is the central fiber, and let me look at some point C here. So this is maybe, this guy is like ZI is equal to zero. So how does how does this? I mean, so if I write this function pi, if I, if I pick local coordinates here, this is going to be of the form z naught and b naught up to z p to the b p, where well, this p is between zero and n. And the b i's are the multiplicities of these different components in the central fiber. I'm not assuming it's reduced. Okay, and I can I mean I can so this is like this is like T, if you want. Um, so I can always arrange this because I'm in somehow in the transcendental category here. There's no problem. I don't need a unit if I don't want. Okay, so I have that. And then basically, so these are some numbers here that you have to take into account. And then you also have, you want to look at how does this eta look locally. So if you, well, you can think of eta as being essentially an n form. So eta is going to be like, it's essentially, First, there's a bunch of powers of these guys, so let me not be too precise. There's some inner, so z0 up to, and up to z, zp, cp, and then times, and then it's some form which I can write as this form. I mean, so i equal to 0 to p. Um, so I have something like, I can write in different ways. It's Kind of nice to write it logarithmically. So then I have the z i over z i. And so I remove this guy. And then the z p over z p. Like that. And then I have the rest of the coordinates. Right, so those don't, the other coordinates don't define, and they're kind of more or less randomly chosen. I don't really need them. Uh, I mean, I need them. Yeah. But the other guys are more. So you plus except that you should have a minus one to the n, and you should the i 
and you should divide by di. I think this is somehow. Right? But basically, the main point is that if I write it like this, then these numbers here, so this skeleton, I'm not going to redefine the definition of a skeleton, but what you did was to each vertex, so each divisor, you associate some number, and this number is gotten from these CIs and the BIs. So the skeleton. is defined using the, the BIs, the CIs. So in some formula, which I don't prefer not to write down, but some, some, some function of these two guys, it defines the rational number, and then I get a rational number on each vertex, and I want to take the skeleton is defined as the, where the, this is minimal. Yes? Uh, this long expression yeah. is uh, your polymorphic advantage well, I mean, maybe I'm cheating a little bit, but at least when I, when I, at least this is something that if I restrict this to, uh, to the fiber, I, I certainly get a non-vanishing section. I mean, local, local is going to look like that. I'm not going to do much more with it, but I mean, it's kind of just a starting point for, uh, for studying what happens near a given point here. Oh, because this looks like something on a torus. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's the main point. So somehow everything looks. Okay. I mean, of course, there's, it's not exactly right. I mean, it's, I say here, there's asymptotically it looks like this. No. But that's somehow the point. When you do calculations, you want to do some kind of toric or toroidal calculations, and they become somewhat messy, but in principle, they're metric. Okay. And in fact, you want something which is globally defined. No, well, no. I mean, eta is globally defined, so. So it's, you can view this kind of thing as some kind of reference, or actually if I don't, if I just, this is some kind of reference mm -hmm. form, and then I compare them, and I know that there are some, in, some integers like this, and of course there's, it's not exactly like this, but. Now of course you have to use that, that what you're doing is globally defined, otherwise it's not clear what you're computing. But eta is a priori defined, and this is some kind of local expression for it. Well, I mean, if, I mean, you use. I mean, it's not equal exactly, right? So it's, I'm just saying asymptotically look like this. So I mean, I can compare them. So whatever is, I mean, so it, I mean, it's kind of set up. This, I mean, if I just look at this part here, when I wedge it with dt dt, it's become something that's. <coughs> well, I mean, I'm not sure how much more I want to say about this, but I mean, I I can I, I, mean, I write some local exp I mean, local development of what it is there. So I mean, it's not I don't define it's this doesn't define a that is already chosen. Uh, maybe you don't want to speak in detail, but. So. My question was that you uh, using eta, you define some weight function on yeah. the skeleton, and then right. you say that you consider those places where it's minimal. Yes. The question was, uh, is this set independent of the model? No. So I mean, of course, it, it, right. So this is something I'm, I am sweeping a little bit under the rug. So I mean, already the dual complex depends on the model. Um, so of course, the skeletons. A priori, you have to be. You have to say what are, how are different <laughs> dual complexes related. And that can be done in a couple of ways. I'll say something towards the end. Some of the more fancy way and the elegant way is to say that these both sit inside some like Berkovich space, non-Archimedean space, and there they're just subsets. There they're going to be the same. Um, another way is to whenever you have two models, you can always compare them by a bigger model. They pull back, and then you see that they somehow pull back to the same. Yeah, I mean, it's something to verify. It's not automatic, but it, that, that's not so difficult. For instance, proving it's connected, you need to have some, then you need some more serious input. OK. So then there's something, I mean, this is, so for the calculations, uh, there's something that you can call a tropicalization map. I mean, not, it's not that I'm doing any serious tropical geometry or whatever that is, anyway. Uh, but basically some kind of polar coordinates for computations on a 
I'm going to do here. So um, I'm going to define I'm going to define a map trop x. So this is going to go from or actually let me do it from like x. So sitting inside script x like this to uh, uh, to the dual complex. So this is this is defined locally near the central fiber and in the coordinates like this by I'm just going to say that so trop x. So this is I just take log say z zero divided by uh, well I guess log pi or if you want log this is again pi is kind of like t uh, and then I take these guys. So this it takes so this takes values in a simplex. Which simplex? So it's in a simplex. Uh, basically, I just say the sum of b j w j equal to one inside some R plus to the p plus one. Right? And this I identify this with a simplest in the dual complex <coughs> cut out by those devices. So of course, this, so it's this is not uniquely defined, but it's almost uniquely defined, right? I mean, it, of course, it depends on the choice of coordinates. Um, but if I'm somehow, if you compare two different coordinate charts, um, and when you're close enough to the to the point you're looking at, this kind of intersection point, when you're close enough to the center fire, that special point, these maps. Differ by less and less, so so you can anyway, and then you somehow you have to group. So this is defined locally, so you have to kind of do local definitions and glue them together using some partition of unit argument. So, you, so what you end up with is is well-defined map like this. Um, it's not unique, but again, sufficiently unique for my purposes. This, well, I mean, this is, and this is certainly this kind of things have been used, and sometimes it is called kind of a tropicalization map uh, in slightly different contexts. See? Um, right, so now I want to define some kind of hybrid space. So I'm going to have. I have my degeneration, I have this model x script x, and I have the dual complex. Um, so, so then I want to use a construction which I haven't, we haven't seen being directly defined before, but it's kind of similar to what people have done in the past. So I think there's an old paper by Bergman, the same as in Bergman fans, not the same as, not the same as in Bergman kernel, I guess. Um, and it's similar to kind of construction by Morgan, Shalen, uh, maybe in 84, I mean, in the 80s or something, but it's not exactly the same. And I think Shao Fabio had a kind of unpublished uh, version of this as well. So, what I claim, what I, you can define, I'm going to define some, so it kind of depends on x, so I define this as x. And just the disjoint union with the simplicial complex. So somehow I take my model, I remove the central fiber, or special fiber, well, central fiber, and then I stick in the dual complex. I mean, just as sets. So now this is going to, when I, I declare, I want to map this. Say 
I want a certain number of functions or maps to be continuous, then I take the weakest topology to do that. So basically what I want is a bunch of properties. So I want this map pi should be continuous. Right? So this should be continuous. I want the x sitting inside here. This should be an open. I mean, x is now an open set by definition here, so but I want this to be an open immersion. So I mean, the sets that are open in x will also be open here. And the same thing for dual complex. So this would be a closed immersion. Right. All right, but that that's, doesn't so much, but then the main point is that this map, this tropicalization map, x from, well, so now I, I extend it like this, so this is, this to delta x, so this should be the, the this is the identity on delta x. I define it to be the identity on delta x, and it's defined, but this kind of formula, otherwise, I'm going to glue together, so I demand that this be This is this is independent of, of choices made. So delta x is just the image of this position map, or well, I mean, I, I define this is defined in, regardless. This is a dual uh, I, complex. Sorry, sorry. This is a dual intersection sorry. complex. Mm -hmm. So it's some kind of surgery. You instead of putting in script x, the central fiber, you put in the dual complex of the central. And then one can do yeah. that, and then you want. Assuming x dense. Sorry? x is dense. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. It's an yeah. yeah. And I the idea that. to understand the definition, right, of the map to the general complex, and if you define it as a map yeah. or something. Yeah, right, but I identified, so the image, because I have, I mean, I have that z0, v0, okay. the zp, vp, this is equal to my pi here, right? Okay. So it maps to this r plus p plus 1. But in fact, it maps into this hyperplane, yes. which is so it maps into the simplex. Mm -hmm. And now I just—I mean, this is the identify that for the simplex in the in the dual complex. But only one of them simplex. Right. It says locally, so this is I this defines it in a neighborhood yeah, of that point, and then I have to glue together using a partition of unity. And, mm -hmm. and there's a little bit of work, and you have to do that in a somewhat careful way, but it can be done. Mm -hmm. So again, I mean. It's possible this has been done at some point. <coughs> we didn't really but it's not, uh, not very immediate. It's, it's, it's not very, sorry? It's not uh, quite immediate. Uh, there is work about it. There's a little bit of work, yeah. yeah. I mean, mainly just that you have to do a partition of unity argument, which is not that difficult. But so I, I, don't think there is a, I don't think there is a completely canonical map like that. Mm -hmm. It will depend on some choice, I think. That. Uh, so, <coughs> so I mean, basically, right? I mean, suppose kind of locally. So this is like an X or something like this. Um, so in X hip, you would instead have. So I mean, here you have these fibers. So inside here, you would <coughs> somehow put a simplex instead, right? and then you have the fibers. And of course, then there may be other things going out here. Maybe you have different dimensions and whatnot. So how would you? Um, so somehow, how do I? I mean, what points? How do I get a neighborhood of this thing here? The neighborhood here would correspond to something that comes in in a certain logarithmic way. It's really hard to draw, but essentially you want some relation between log mod z zero and log mod z one in this case. That these are. The ratio of those two are kind of between two numbers. So it's a bit similar to in complex analysis when you look at like Shisoma numbers or something like that. Weighted along numbers. Alright. So you can define this space. I'm not claiming it lives in a particular you can probably develop this in a more fancy way, living in some category, 
whatnot, but let, let's not do that. But at least now we can formulate something. So now we can formulate um, theorem. Um, so as probability measures on on this space, you have that this mu t, which was defined as well, I mean it was essentially was this eta t wedge eta t bar? It's the same as before, but so this converges as t stands to zero to um, to a measure uh, probability measure. So it's at t zero on this. So this is like the fiber over zero, uh, and this is of, it's going to be of a certain form. It's going to be of the back type. Ranges over over simplices in the skeleton of so only the simplices in the skeletons. So that's kind of a subset, and the guys that are maximal dimension. So I'm not assuming in this theorem at this point. I don't assume that I have a maximal degeneration. So for instance, in this non-collapsing case, there is only one. Then it just converges to appointment, which is not so. Then it doesn't say that much. Um, okay, and then you have so so these c sigma are positive numbers, and this Lebesgue sigma. This is Lebesgue measure. Simplex, of course, you have a Lebesgue measure, but it's only defined up to some constant, positive constant. But here you have some kind of integral affine structure on each simplex as well, so you can normalize by the z affine structure on each simplex. Okay. Of course, right, just say c sigma, you could overdetermine. Non-vanishing holomorphic end part <coughs> next to you. Uh, so maybe a couple of remarks. Just um, it's just let me not state it precisely, but I think in, there is a closely related. different situation and their limit measure is actually not on the dual complex but I should still mention that there's some work like maybe 10 years ago or less uh, by Jean-Marlois uh, and Chinkle who looked at uh, situations and I can also well okay I can also let me not write it down but I don't know. What I don't know what happens in the canonically polarized case. That would be very interesting. But you can generalize it to instead of having Calabi-Yau, you kind of have a metric on the relative canonical bundle, and then you get into this. You can define a once you have a metric on the relative canonical bundle, you can define a skeleton associated with that, and you have the same kind of result.
Oh, yeah. Can I say something about the C sigma? Yeah. Uh, so what was, what's the like number? Well, I'll say, right. I mean, so, so this, I think in this generality, when you have a, uh, well, actually, let me first write the word. So let me. So in general, we don't really know. I mean, so, so also version um, when and for if I have a matrix on on the relative canonical bundle, which, which is more general, and then and then you prove the same thing, and you can't say anything. But um, right, okay. So let me say, let me state theorem B. So this probably answers your question. I mean, maybe. When x, and this is a maximal degenerate. Um, so when the dual complex has dimension, the skeleton rather, the skeleton has dimension uh, n, the same dimension, then in fact all these c sigmas are one. Or, I mean, then, then the c sigma r is independent. Uh, actually, maybe I should say one more thing. It is, um, when it's maximal, let me state it. Let me state it precisely because it devils a little bit in the details how we do this, but basically we understand what happens in the in the maximal degenerate case. So so this is maximally degenerate and an X is say semi stable. SNC and X0 is, this is SNC and X0 is produced, which you can achieve after a base change, then, then is C, C sigma are equal, I mean these are independent, these are independent of, of sigma, so just, i.e. this mu0 is just a constant times some little bag measure for this the bag measure on the skeleton. I suppose this is the example that was very key for degenerating the three lines. That's right. Do so you know Well I mean so yeah for a plane synthesis? Well I mean so you have a plane cubic for <laughs> three lines, yeah. So I mean I it it's good uh, it's a good illustration. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, why not? It's not a bad idea to illustrate. Um, so I, mean, I had two examples before, so let me. Actually, it's going to be the second example, but okay. So let me. So if I have x t is, or even. Well, let me even write. So even script x. Let me just say that this is. Um, right. So let me say x t. Uh, x, y, z plus x, q plus y, q plus z, q. So this defines the model also t equal to 0. So then you see that x0 is just, this is just a irreducible. So this delta x is just a point. And of course, I mean, so if it converges to something, so then in this case, mu0 is just equal to the Dirac mass. So that's not very interesting somehow. It's the only thing you could possibly converge to, right? It kind of has to. Yeah. So the information, so the theorem really gives most information in the maximally generated case. So if I just do the same, so here is x, y, z plus t plus y, q plus q, zero. So in this case, delta x is this is like a triangle or a circle or something, right? I mean, x0 is, is just like this, and the dual complex, well, these segments are, whatever they are, they're kind of isomorphic to each other. And in this case, the mu0 is just equal to the bag measures. I mean, so it really gives the same mass to all three segments. better somehow to think of this as a circle rather, rather than a triangle. It's just a triangulated circle. Okay. 
so I'm not, not really going to prove this, but I mean, the, the proof, <coughs> let me say something about it. what you, what goes into it. I'm just going to say a couple of words. metric at this point is a bit of a red herring. So that's, I mean, you can also have this version for metrics on the relative canonical one and one person, and there is no. And if you have a back measure on a simplex, you need to kind of show that if you have some error, something stereo, simplex. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, you, you, I'm not going to do the calculation, but you, you really see, in, using this tropicalization map, I mean, this part, this part sits in the, in the uh, simplex, and you can really see that you, you get you get the bag measure when you do the calculation. It's a bit of a mess just to write it down, so I don't want to do it. But, but it, no, it's not that you, you're not solving any more compare or anything at this point. Okay, so, so for Kevin, which is measure and the calculations That's right. I mean, you somewhat decompose the measure. So yeah, the push forward, so the measure gives you something. But then you also look at what happens in the fibers. Some of these tori become smaller and smaller. And I'm not sure if I can really say in words <coughs> what happens. You kind of have to do the calculation. And again, it sounds super difficult, but it's a little bit messy. Uh, for theorem B, though, so that you need then. Um, so I didn't really say where these C sigmas. So you can actually not, these constants, they're not. You actually get an expression for them. There's some kind of some kind of residue, uh, and you some integrated residue or something. So when you actually see what you need there, so you, so you so here you what you do. There are kind of two ingredients. So first you have the structure of the skeleton. So essentially this is a you use that this is well you use part of the fact that this is pseudo-manifold. And this is, was done by, uh, I guess, by Mikhez and Shu. What is a pseudo-manifold? Well, I can you define it, but I mean, just uh, you can ask, like, what kind of simplicial complexes could possibly be manifold? And, and for instance, a curve, you don't want, I mean, this would not be a manifold, for instance. Mm -hmm. The dimension one. So there are some conditions. 
uh, more or less you, more or less like you have a quasi paradimensional version of this. So that is obviously something weaker. <coughs> it's not the same as being a manifold, but it gives you some information about what happens to a dimensional one. So so it didn't, you use that, and you, then you use in, in the end you use the residue formula.
space, but it's, at least it's canonical like that. Um, so you can check this, and you can also check that this actual this skeleton uh, of X, uh, this sits inside this hybrid space. This is as this is, this is as a subset, which is uniquely, so which is independent of uh, of any choice of any eta or any this X. So I really get that this is Konsevich Sobelman skeleton. So this, I mean, this was essentially defined by Konsevich and Sobelman already, and was studied further by Mustatsa, Nikiz, and Chu. Uh, do you have uh, some iPhone structure on this uh, skeleton? Yeah. Uh, so nature of iPhone structure does not really depend on the model. Uh, right, I mean, at least you have a piecewise iPhone structure. If you, if you actually want to go from one simplex to the next, I'm not so sure. <coughs> so, I mean, it's going to be sort of my conjecture if you use it. So, you, you choose the model, you give an uh, FS structure, right? So, the piece of The piece of yeah. the piece of probably, I mean. No, so, I mean, it, it, if, you, if you just define, like, okay. the piecewise integral affine structure does not depend on the choice of model. Okay. So, so, for instance, these kind of bank measure normalized, it does not depend. So, so kind of a corollary of this um, C or something like this. So, the measures. These measures uh, do T probability measures converge as probability measures on this X hyperspace to a natural measure. I mean, it has the same properties. I have a measure on U0 on this perfect space now, X. If they're all images. <coughs> and it's supported on it's supported on this on this Conservative Soilman skeleton, which is this thing. <coughs> and it's of of this kind of the bag type. And, I mean that's especially in the maximum degenerate case you get really something that's given by the normalized that kind of Alright, so let me just briefly in the last. I'm not sure, if I count, but I'm not sure when I exactly started, so let me. You start with like 6, 7, you know, so. okay. Let me just, it's anyway, probably good, I don't have too much time, but it's going to be a little bit optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like five minutes at least. Okay. No, this is very good, this is anyway. So here is a um, kind of speculations rather than anything else. How this fits together uh, with the, uh, this conservative solar my conjecture. Uh, and I have enough time to write what I'm going to do, and then I think it's, in any case, clearly a lot of work. Right, so what is this? So the, here, this, these theorems are convergence about volume forms or measures. So convergence of measures is somehow somewhat weak, and so it should be easier to prove than it is. I mean, Prove it. Uh, so what is the, so what you want is essentially um, what you want to go almost house door, but you can at least look at the following. So so this kind of Ritchie flat, this Ritchie flat metric, omega t, so which is a, so this is uh, on on x t. Um, this is you can get this from Basically, you want, well, you want omega t to be dc phi t, where phi t is a metric. So this is the curvature of a metric on, on L, or so a, this is a metric on LT, which, such that I mean, you get it by solving a Morgan pair equation. That's why we, what Yao did in the end, what you've seen people actually explaining other lecturers explaining in um, <coughs> detail. So you want this to the power n. This should be equal to uh, some constant times mu t. I mean, that's what you get in the end. So I mean, I mean the mu t you don't need to define uh, using this. So this is mu t was mu t was just eta t wedge eta t bar times times some constant. Okay. So you solve. Uh, but now 
you can actually do, at least you, you can study these non orange pair equations also on the uh, non Archimedean set. Yes? Just to I'm completely lost with this uh, thing which you just raised that oh. F0 hybrid is the inverse format <laughs> of delta oh. X. Yes. X0 hybrid was a kind of delta X, or... No, so I mean, I, I, this, this notation, I had the... Before, I had the script X hybrid, which depended on the model. Uh -huh. But now, if I hope I wrote it correctly, this uh -huh. is what I meant. Uh -huh. So this is the guy that doesn't depend. So this is... This, this zero is uh, not so you, do, you define this zero hybrid like this? It's an inverse limit or something. Uh -huh. uh, so, so this was the definition? Yeah, you can... It turns out that you can actually find it in a slightly different... Uh -huh. more in, Canonical way, but I don't have time to do that. Uh -huh. But this turns out to be a Berkovich space. Okay, so the definition is the inverse limit, and the theorem is that it is Berkovich space. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So what I. So it turns out that you can actually solve a non Archimedean and make sense of it as well, which I'm not going to do. So non Archimedean more effective pair equation. So basically something of dc p0 to the power n is equal to some constant time mu0. So this phi0 is now a metric on L0, which is kind of this hybrid thing, which, which is like L. And then again, I do something similar, some amplification, some Berkovich amplification. So this is something I did with Sebastian Lusum and a couple of years ago. Um, and then you can hope. <laughs> Which? But it is on a slime bundle, not uh, it, it's it's in a settings. No, it's a line, I mean, it's, this is a line bundle just by obtained by base change, and then you can analytify it in the sense of recurve. And you, should, well, you have to talk about what you mean by metric on that, but all of that can be done. <coughs> and you can also make sense of the, this equation, and that I'm not going to do. Um, and now we can hope that mu t converging to mu zero. Of course, this is false in general, right? But, but at least it's somehow tempting to believe that uh, if you if, if you knew maybe a lot more about this convergence or something like that, and somehow the solutions uh, to the corresponding multiplicative equations would actually converge in some suitable sense, and then uh, this would imply this conservative solid line conjecture, which which deals with gromov hausdorff limits, but it's not so different from, from this. Right. Anyway, so luckily I don't have more time.